Good evening. We're going to take a look at a bit of code today that's going to show how to use the motor encoders. Our primary goal here that I've set, you know, just to kind of show something, is I have two lines of tape on my desk. They're exactly six inches apart. So I'm going to try to move that exact six inches, make a perfect pivot turn on my right wheel exactly 90 degrees, and then move forward four inches. You can see how these sort of commands could easily chain together um, to make a, you know, to help with the house part of this problem. So the first thing I need to do is I need to basically sync the motors together because I want to let robot C keep track of how the motors are moving. So we've used this command before, and sync motors, and again, in this case, I'm going to make motor C follow whatever I do to motor B. Once I run this command, it's important not to try to do anything to motor C. You can get some errors if you do. And then I also need to set the ratio of how I want to control motor C. This can range anywhere from negative 100 to positive 100, and it basically keeps the motor counts in that proportion. So positive at 100 means that B and C will run exactly the same, and the robot should go pretty straight. Um, I'm going to clear the motor counter, uh, the motor encounters. Again, these you can spin the motor about 19 times before the counter um, overflows and resets. Um, and you generally do want to avoid that because it's a little bit unpredictable. Uh, so you usually what you do is just set it to zero whenever you go ahead and get ready to start. Um, after I set the motor encoder, I'm going to put a small pause in here just to give the firmware time to actually complete that task. But yeah, this is just a safety kind of feature here, although I believe it's actually a pretty important safety feature. The new command we're going to introduce here is called end motor encoder target. Um, and again, I set this for motor B. I don't do anything with motor C. This is the number, or this is the number of degrees we want the motor to rotate. So this is a little bit bigger than about a turn and a third is what I measured it out to be. Um, and again, this was just done by putting some lines of tape down and you know running the robot repeatedly till I got the correct value. Um, you know when you you use this set of code, this is the number you'll probably need to go ahead and change. The motor encoder command does not start the robot moving. It simply sets a goal. Um, you know, our normal motor command here, I gave it kind of a halfway power. I uh, usually don't want to put 100 here if you're going to try to sync them, because then if you know, one motor is running faster than the other, if one's running at 100, it can't catch up very easily. This is So it's usually safer. 75 usually is fine. Um, you know, as your batteries go up and down, this you know number varies a little bit, so this is just a little bit safer. Um, so this will start the robot moving forward. Um, now the way this, because I've set this target, the motor is going to run until this value is set, and then it's going to go ahead and stop. And the run motor run state um, variable, you know, again referencing my master motor, will tell me what state it's in. I you don't really care what state it's in. I want to wait until it gets to the idle state, which basically means I've met my goal. I set that value. Um, because you pretty much never want an empty while loop, because that'll hog the CPU. We put a little bit of a wait in here. And so this, you know, what is it, you know, from line 12 to line 31, these lines of code will make the robot move very precisely six inches. So now I'm going to kind of basically repeat this a couple times. Um, I don't need to run the sync command again. That, you know, will be remembered from last time. But I'm going to set the turn ratio to zero. You know, in effect, this is going to freeze motor C. That means I'm basically going to pivot right around that wheel. Um, if I wanted to pivot around the center of my robot, I would set this to negative 100. Um, and also I have to adjust the rest of the values a little bit. Um, I reset that motor encounter, put the same weight in. It turns out that you know, my turn's actually larger than my movement, so this number is a little bit bigger. And again, set the robot to run forward and um, you know, put the same while loop in here. And you know, last but not least, I you know, repeat the same block of code. I use a slightly smaller value, and this will give me my four-inch movement. I chose four inches because my desk isn't that big. Um, it's important to note a couple things here. So these are some of the weird parts that are robot C-isms. Um, number one, once you've synced the motors, you need to turn that off if you want to go back to steering with, like, proportional steering with the IR sensor or following lines or whatever. And so sync none is the way that you would do that if you needed to. The other thing which I found, this is kind of mostly experimental, is you generally don't want to set a negative uh, motor um, encoder target. Without a negative motor encoder target will not stop the motor at the end, but kind of allow the motor to coast or float. Um, 
if you actually want it to turn backwards, you set the same encoder target, you still set it positive, but you just put the power negative. So it's, yeah, it's not the way I would have done it, but it's the way the firmware works, and you know, and you know, once you know it, it doesn't surprise you. The last piece is, is that if you don't put this while loop in here, if you issue other motor commands here, especially if I tested it, that if you stop the motor, it seems to re-clear the encoder target. So yeah, this is kind of for the next motor movement. But again, I've never seen a line of code unless I had multitasking that was fighting with each other that would usually get in the way of that. Again, I would be pretty careful using these commands if you have multitasking running. Um, you know, the this relies on some other hidden tasks that are running in the firmware to go ahead and work. So I hope this gives you an idea of how you might assemble your move through the house part of your code. Um, I'll attach a short video of the robot working to the end of this. And again, if you have any questions, please send email. Have a great night. So again, our goal here, the robot should move from one edge of the tape all the way to the far edge of the second piece of tape, make a turn and move about four inches. So that's what our code does. Have a great night.